the Cheetah 3 Show Lounge in Pompano Beach, Florida, the management proudly presents Mr. Truck Stop himself, the one and only Gene Tracy. Hey, y'all tonight! Oh, what a pleasure to be back at the Cheetah 3. Yeah, I got my friends from North Carolina, brawled down there in the doggy brawl. <laughs> God, it's nice to be here at the Cheetah 3. I was talking to, uh, uh, to a Carolina freight driver over there earlier. He told me last trip he made up north. Uh, he, he told me he drove this 15-speed uh, 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 Mac. Said dri driving a Mac is like having a four-inch Peter. Uh, it's all right around town, but it ain't worth a shit out on the road. But at any rate, he, he's driving this 15-speed Mac. And he was burning up that interstate. Tearing up that highway. Goddamn heading on. Moving out. Hauling ass. Shitting and getting. 55 miles an hour. His CD had broke down is what happened. <laughs> Saw this hippie hitchhiking, stopped and picked the hippie up. The hippie got in the tractor and the driver goes through all 15 speeds. Again, very intensive driver. Looked straight ahead. For 10 minutes, nobody said a word. Finally, the hippie looked at the driver and said, Well, <laughs> I guess you, you're probably wondering whether I'm a boy or a girl, what with all this long hair and everything. Carolina driver said it don't make no goddamn difference. I'm gonna fuck you anyhow. You know that. I, I like it. About the Hennis driver. Bud Hilker was his name, I believe, out of Winston-Salem. And he went on vacation to Hawaii, and the ship he was on sank. And he was a sole survivor. Lived, uh, and he finally found his way to this desert island and he'd been there for two months and being a Hennis driver naturally is way over six <laughs> and he he had jacked off till his Peter was raw <laughs> it was in shreds <clears throat> and he was wanting to go again but he couldn't get it to come up so he was laying out on the beach about halfway in the water and the, the waves would wash it up on his stomach. Then the wave would wash it back down in the sand, back up on his stomach, back down in the sand. But he couldn't get it to come up. And he was wanting to beat it bad. And he looked out on the horizon. He said, my God, what is that I see? Said, that's a ship coming. Said, I'm going to get rescued. Said, when I get rescued, said, when I get to port, I'm going to get a piece of ass. And this Peter come up just a little bit. He said, you know, said, they might have some women on that ship. Said, I might get laid tonight. And this Peter come up a little bit more. He said, yes, I see them. Said, there's women on that ship. I'm going to get laid tonight. Does Peter come up a little bit more? He said, my God, looky there. Said, all them women on that ship's naked. Said, they're running around the ship naked. And his Peter just jumped right straight up in there. He grabbed it, started beating the hell out of it. Said, ha ha, I was just kidding. Ain't no ship coming after all. about that ICC inspector named Johnny Vivona. Mean son, bitch. Retired from the ICC and joined the French Foreign Legion. And they were, they were looking at his record, said, well, I see that you were a, 
a former ICC inspector, you a big enough prick to become a commanding officer right away. <laughs> so they made him a commanding officer in the French Foreign Legion. He goes to his fort that he's going to take command of and his executive officer showing him around the fort. And he looks behind the enlisted men's barracks and here's this old mangy-ass camel tied up back there. I said, what the hell's that camel for? He's the... Executive officer said, well, sir, we are kind of isolated out here in the desert. He said, and, and we're quite a way, you know, there's no women here. And the men use that camel for sexual relief. <laughs> and old Johnny Vivona, this XICC inspector, said, that's disgusting. About three weeks later, he called the executive officer into his quarters and said, hey, Said, do you remember that camel we were talking about when I first come here? Said, I want you to bring that camel back behind my quarters tonight. <laughs> so the exec brought the camel back behind his quarters. And the commanding officer pushed a wooden box up behind the camel, got up on the box, and he started fucking this camel. <laughs> and when he got finished, he climbed off the box and walked around the front of the camel. The, executive officer was standing there kind of snickering and laughing. And his name was Camille. And the, and the commanding officer said, well, said, didn't I do it right? Said, I did, did I do something wrong? Said, isn't that the way the men do it? And Camille, the executive officer said, no, sir. Said, the men usually ride the camel into the nearest village and go to the whorehouse. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heard about the driver for the yellow transport cut lines. He was a hair lip boy. He walked in a bar and they had a humpback bar timber. They asked the bartender, he said, then how much is your Johnny Walker black label scunt? He said, it's $4 a shot. Then $4 a shot. I damn, said, I can't afford that. Then how much is your VO? He said, VO's $3 a shot. Then $3. I damn, I can't afford no $3. Then how much is your beer? He said, it's a dollar and a half a glass. Dollar and a half a grand? Then, goddamn, fella, you're a little bit out of line. He said, but I, I do want to tell you something. He said, said, I appreciate you're not making fun of my being a hair lip, because the many people do. And the humpback bartender said, well, I appreciate you're not making fun of, of my humpback. He said, oh, are you a humpback? Said, is that a hump on your back? Said, I thought that was your ass. Everything else in here is the damn high. You know what I mean? Yeah, about that hair lip truck driver for refrigeration transport. Went into this liquor store. There's a hair lip boy, and he asked for a bottle. He said, give me a bottle of gin. The guy that runs the liquor store thought, why this dumb son of a bitch? Said, I'll have some fun with him. What kind of gin do you want? And this refrigeration transport driver said, you mean there's more than one kind of gin? He said, yes, sir, we got three kinds. He said, what are they? Said, well, we've got hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Refrigeration transport man said, yes, sir. Then I understand there's three kinds of turds, too. <laughs> said, what do you mean three kinds of turds? He said, well, there's mustard, custard, and you, you big shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, about this hair lip driver for Mercury Motor Lines out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Went to bed one night with his wife, Mary Kate. <laughs> he said, Mary Kate, said, let's do it different. Mary Kate said, what do you mean do it different? He said, let's, let's try it back to back. 
She said, how in the hell are we going to do it back to back? He said, well, hell, we couldn't call in another couple. You know what I mean. <laughs> about the waitress that, that went to the doctor and he told her to take her clothes off she said oh no oh no she said I've never in my life been naked in front of a man he said but I'm a doctor she said I don't care I've never in my life been naked in front of a man he said well you leave your clothes on but I've still got to got to examine you she said well whatever is necessary so he puts his hand in under her dress under her slip, under her bra, and cups her right titty. He said, say nine. She said, nine. So he moves it over to her left titty, he said, say nine. She said, nine. <laughs> moves his hand all the way down under her panties. He said, say nine. She said, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yeah. Yeah, you heard about the hairlift that, that was waiting for a bus and he ran over to the whorehouse and he was a real sport. He ran into the madam and he said, Hey, then I need a girl, but I need her in a hurry. He said, I got to catch the bus here in 20 minutes. She said, Well, I'm sorry, but all the girls are tied up right now. He said, Well, how about you? Oh, she said, I'd never take care of it. He said, Oh, come on. Said, You could be a sport. She said, no, I never take care of any cuss. He said, oh, come on. Said, be a sport. She said, I tell you, I know. He said, well, damn it, you could just be a sport just this once. She said, well, if you put it like that, well, I'll be a sport. So they go in the bedroom, get all undressed, start to get on the bed. He said, say, then let's go dog fashion. Oh, no, she said, I'd never go dog fashion. He said, oh, come on, be a sport. She said, no, she said, I just don't want to go dog fight. He said, oh, damn it, come on, be a sport. She said, I'm not going to be that much of a sport. He said, well, if you don't want to be a sport. So he lays her down, crawls on the regular fashion. After about three minutes, she said, what the hell's wrong? He said, damn it, I'm hung up. <laughs> she said, hung up? He said, yes, and I, I could have told you that was going to happen. It happens every time I get a little, I get hung up. She said, well, what the hell are we going to do? He said, pick up the telephone and call for an ambulance, and they'll have to come in with a stretcher and carry us out to the ambulance. Oh, she said, my reputation would be ruined. The people in this no neighborhood don't know what's going on. He said, well, it's on your own damn fault, you know. If you'd been a sport and fuck dog facing like I wanted to, we couldn't have got up and walked to the damn hospital. You know that? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right on. About the two truck drivers sitting in, in the truck stop up over near Joplin, Missouri. What's the name of that little truck stop just out of Joplin? Anyway, they were sitting there. They were talking about the whorehouses they got out back. And don't you think they don't have them out back there because they got them out back there. And this one truck driver was telling the other, said they got three whores out there. Said that first one, that blonde-haired girl, a beautiful girl, but pass her up. That second hair, that second one, that red-haired girl, gorgeous, but you pass her up. Said that third one, that ugly little old girl, she's a cripple girl, said that's the one you want. Said that girl has got one leg two inches shorter than the other one, but that's the one you want. Said you take her in the room, and you don't screw her on the bed, you stand her up against the wall. And you screw up, but before you screw, you go to the fireplace, the upper left-hand brick is loose. You take that brick and you put it under that two-inch short foot. And you start screwing her against the wall. And just about the time you get her in the short rows, you kick that brick out from under. And brother, when she starts reaching for the floor with that short leg, you really got yourself a piece of asshole. Yeah, we stopped, we stopped in Washington, D.C., right outside of Washington, a little truck stop here about a week ago. And they had about 20 uh, truck drivers in this truck stop. And here came this good-looking broad walked in, sat down, and naturally all the truck drivers looking at her and watching her. And she sat down and ordered a cup of coffee. And she said, just let me buy a round for the house. I'll just pay everybody's check in the house. And damn these truck drivers looking at her, because that's unusual for a woman to do that. She finished her coffee, 
opened her handbag, put on her lipstick, fixed her hair, pulled on her mink stole, and started to walk out. The owner of the truck stop said, wait a damn minute, lady. Said, didn't you forget something? Said, forget what? What did I forget? He said, you said you were going to pay for everybody's meal in the house. Oh, she said. She stopped, put one leg up on a chair, lifted her dress. She said, just take it out of this. <laughs> owner of the truck stop looked at her and said, damn, lady, don't you have anything smaller than that? <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened. Heard about this cat that was having this, this operation on his right testicle. And, and they had laid him on the table and opened the scrotum and removed the right testicle. And this one doctor was performing a very tedious incision on his right testicle. And this doctor's colleague stepped around to the end of the table and he tripped and bumped into him. He dropped the guy's nut and stepped on the damn thing. <laughs> And yeah, they could see lawsuits for malpractice and malfeasance and mal everything else. He said, my gosh, what are we going to do? Said, damn if I know. Said, this guy uh, is going to sue us to death. He said, well, let me ask you, how long is this guy going to be asleep? He said, all that shit we pumped into him, he's got to sleep another three hours. He said, well, let's go down to the bar and get a drink. Said, we got to talk about this. So they go down to the bar, one guy orders a highball, the other guy gets a Gibson, sitting there stirring that martini with that bar onion, all of a sudden he holds that bar onion up, he said, looky there. Said, look at that onion. Same color, same size, same consistency as that nut we just crushed. He said, let's take this onion and sew up in the guy. I ain't gonna tell nobody, no damn well you ain't gonna tell nobody. So they proceed to do that. Six months later, this one doctor was walking down the street and sees this guy coming toward him. Ducked in this hallway trying to avoid him, but the guy nailed him. He said, hey, doctor, man, I feel great. I was telling my wife, what a hell of a surgical team, you fellas. One thing I got to find out, doctor, how come every time I pass a hamburger joint, I get a heart on? What the hell is that on? Yeah. Guy goes to the whorehouse, he said, how much is it? She said, well, if you want to use the bed, it's two dollars. If you want to get a blanket on the floor, it's one dollar. And if you want to use the floor without a blanket, it's 50 cents. Truck driver reaches in his pocket, hands her two dollars. She said, you want to use the bed? He said, no, mama, give me four on the floor. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I have, I talked to Wild Man Steve. I did a tape with Wild Man. You know him. You know the brother Wild Man. I told him, I said, God damn, Steve, I'm tired. He said, what you mean you tired, cracker? I said, man, I've been busy on a set of jumper cables and a nigger funeral. What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> And he told me, he said, Tracy, how come all you honkies eat pussy? I said, what you mean? He said, all you white motherfuckers eat pussy. Put rat poison in pussy, every honk in the world be dead in two weeks. That ain't no shit. Oh, yeah, I do. Animal stories, nature stories from time to time. Uh... As a matter of fact, I heard a story about the little mouse that's sitting in the bar drinking, and this good-looking giraffe come in, sat down by him, and, and, and he bought the giraffe a couple of drinks and propositioned the giraffe, and the mouse and the giraffe left together. And the next morning, the bartender's just opening up, and here come the little mouse. I mean, his ass was dragging. Crawled up on a bar stool, fell over on the bar, said, God damn, bartender, give me a double shot of anything quick. Bartender said, shit, mouse, you look like you've had it. Mouse said, had it? Had it? <laughs> Man, from between the fucking and kissing, I must have run 800 miles last night, I swear to God. Oh, yeah.
I got stories. Mrs. Ben Franklin looking out the window. There's Ben standing out in the backyard holding a piece of string. Had a goddamn old kite laying on the ground out there. She stuck her head out the window and said, Ben, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> ben said, oh, I can't get this son of a bitch to stay up in there. She said, well, of course not, you son of a bitch. What you need is a little piece of tail. He said, shit, that's what I told you last night. You said, go fly a kite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Woo. About the young broad married the old man. She was about 23, and he was 71, and they got married, and everybody knew they were newlyweds, went to the Holiday Inn and checked in, and the next morning, about 7.30, here come the old gentleman springing out of the room, and a lot of bounce in his walk, and everybody was watching them to see how they got along on their wedding night. About three minutes later, here come this young broad, her hair still all unraveled and fucked up, her clothes messed up. And, and one of the maids stopped her and said, what's the matter, honey? She said, that son of a bitch told me he'd been saving for 40 years. <laughs> I thought he meant money. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Woo. Story about the guy that went to the doctor. Said, Doctor, my wife and I been married four years. And we had the cutest little boy, but we're both very fair. Uh, we're both Swedish, of Swedish descent. We're both blonde. And, and our little boy's hair is just as red as it can be, and we want to know how that could happen. And the doctor said, well, said, let's get to the bottom of this. Said, uh, how, how often do you engage in sexual activity? And I said, oh, let's see, we've been married four years, got a two-year-old boy, we must have fucked at least three times. The doctor said, that's it, God damn it, rust. <laughs> oh, shit, I know that. Ah. Story about the little boy standing on a corner, holding his hand open, had a little, little turtle laying on its back. And little boys just a crying and carrying on. And this man come by and said, little boy, what you crying about? And little boy said, my turtle, my turtle died. Man said, damn, son, don't cry. Said, what we can do if you promise not to cry. Now, over at my house, I got a matchbox. And, and we can go over there and we can take that matchbox and put some cotton in it and put the turtle in it and then pour more cotton in it and then put the lid on the matchbox and we'll go outside to the back at first I'll have my my wife make some Kool-Aid and bake some cookies and uh, we'll get some ice cream and you can invite some of your friends if you want to and we'll go out in the backyard and dig a hole and bury this about that time the little turtle kicked over and started to crawl off Little boy looked at it and said, let's, let's kill it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's little boy and little girl out in the backyard playing. Little boy dropped his pants and said, ha, 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 you ain't got one of these. Little girl went in the house just crying. Came back out in the tin... Came back out in about 10 minutes, all smiles. Little boy said, what the hell are you laughing at? She said, well, I told my mama what you said. And my mama said, if you got one of these, you can get all them you want, you know? What? <laughs> yeah, I, I... <laughs> Woo! Anybody here watch Roots on TV? Did you watch Roots, Charlie? I watched about 15 minutes of it, but nobody made a basket. Fuck it, I changed channels. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you heard what Abe Lincoln said when he came out from under a three-day drum. 
Afraid who? <laughs> Heard about the truck driver for Jones Truck Lines out of Shreveport. Lived out in the swamp, got up one morning, told his wife, said, Fuck, I'm leaving your ass. Went out, got in his rowboat, started pulling the oars, pulling the oars. She come down to Water's Head and said, Honey, what I'm going to do at the farm? He said, Sell the motherfucking farm. I'm leaving your ass. Just kept her rolling. She said, honey, what I'm going to do to these youngies? Said, drown the motherfucking youngies. I'm leaving your ass. Just kept her rolling. She raised her dress, said, honey, what I'm going to do to the rest of this? He started rowing the other way, pulling oars against each other. Said, one of these days, I am going to leave your ass off of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Looking around the room. Got, hi there. How you all? Got the Oriental fella back there in the middle. How are you, sir? Nice to have you. I want you to know I ain't still pissed off about Pearl Harbor. <laughs> I do have a little radio I'd like for you to look at before you leave if you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> or about the Japanese girl who went to the optometrist. Optometrist looked in her eyes, said, I see you have a cataract. She said, no, I'd like a wrenching continental. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, a little effort. <laughs> I have a story about the golf pro that was working with the broad, and, and all day long, her first day, she was trying to learn the grip, and she just could not get it down pat. Just something about it she couldn't understand. Finally, after about four hours and total exasperation to get the golf pro said, well, grab it like you grab your old man's cock. Well, I ain't got to tell you. She took that goddamn club and hit that fucking ball on a par four for a hole in one. And the pro said, now you see there, God damn it, if you could just learn to do that with your hands. <laughs> Poetry corner time. Remember them old them old limericks we used to do in school about the about the young man from Flint. His dick was so long that it bent. Save himself trouble, he stuck it in double instead of coming, he went. Remember all that? Old, oh god damn about the said from the depths of the Abbey St. Giles came a scream that was noticed for miles. Said the Pope, goodness gracious, don't Father Ignatius remember? The bishops got piles. <laughs> About the young fella named Skinner took this young lady out to dinner. At a quarter of nine, they started to dine, and a quarter of ten, it was dinner. <laughs> well, I mean the dinner, not Skinner. See, Skinner was no beginner. Skinner had a dinner before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yeah! About the trucker going out in West Texas, driving this bus just to get it. And the goddamn bus broke down. And there's four hours late pulling into the next bus stop. The driver told everybody, said, now we only going to be here seven minutes. Anybody that ain't back on this bus in seven minutes is left here. So naturally, everybody run to the crapper, and as fate would have it, this old man, they only got one commode, and they got a line of about 27 guys all trying to go in seven minutes. And as fate would have it, this old man gets up the front, and he's standing there just a-fumbling and a-searching and 
All them guys behind him dancing around, saying, oh, God damn, old man, hurry up. And he's just a fumbling and a searching. And I said, God damn, old man. I bet it don't take you that long to find it at home. He said, no. But then at home, you see, I ain't wearing near this many clothes. And then there's two of us are looking for it, too. <laughs> I heard about the, about the uh, trucker for Dixie truck line down there in Boulder City, North Carolina, old Tom, uh, uh, Tom Keener. Uh, uh, Tom was walking through Boulder City one time, as tell, but still tell this story down in Boulder City. He's the richest son of it's from Boulder City, I'll tell you that. Walking down the street and walked into the blacksmith shop and the blacksmith been working on this horseshoe and he had just laid it aside and Tommy walked in and and it's still hotter than a motherfucker. Tommy didn't know I walked in, picked this uh, horseshoe up, got down to it on the ground. One of these guys looked at Tommy and said, God damn, Tommy. Well, that was hot, wasn't it? Tommy said, no. No, it, it just don't take me long to look at a horseshoe. You know what, right? <laughs> Tommy's cool. Tommy's cool. He gets it. Oh, yeah. I heard about the drunk told his friend, said, I bought, I bought my wife a Jaguar. Said, did, did she like it? She got it goddamn fun on it either before she had a chance to say anything. <laughs> sure. Drunk called the police station, said, send, send a squad car. Somebody stole my steering wheel, stole all the dash, all the buttons off the dash, sent a squad car quick. Went out to his car, went back in, called the police station again, said, ne never mind, I was in the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> ah. That trucker got paid. In addition to his regular payment, got his Christmas bonus. $850 his check came due. On his way home, he stopped at the bar, cashed his check, and he started getting into it. About 8 o'clock in the morning, showed up drunker and a fart. His wife said, you son of a bitch, where's the check? He said, I, I spit, spit it. She said, spit it? All that goddamn money in one night, spit it? Why, you dirty bastard, I could have lived for eight months on that kind of money. He said, well, uh, of course you could, you son of a bitch. And, and in the first place, you, you don't drink. And uh, in the second place, you don't smoke. Well, you already got your own pussy. <laughs> <laughs> The guy walked in the bar here at the Cheetah Three Lounge, sat down by a drunk truck driver, drove for Carolina Freight. Guy looked at the Carolina driver, said, God damn, fella, did you shit your pants? <laughs> Carolina driver said, yes, yeah, sir. Said, why, you nasty son of a bitch. Did you realize how that smells? God damn, won't you go clean up? Carolina driver said, well, well God damn. I, I ain't through yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've been very kind and very generous here at Pachita 3. Thank you very much.